Welcome, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you for a movie review for a movie that might be uh, exclusively found on uh, Amazon Prime streaming service. I, I, I don't know when the hell this was put up or whatever. I, I looked up online and I guess the, the year 2022 is attached to this movie. I thought, you know, being, a, you know, me myself being a uh, fan of summer camp slasher movies from the 80s and things... I thought, well, this might be right up my alley. And having already, was it last year? I think it was last year. At some point, it might have been last year. Having already seen and been very, actually pretty, very impressed with um, She Came From the Woods, uh, a movie that's kind of branded on TubiTV.com as a Tubi original. It is actually on DVD and Blu-ray and like um, European markets, but unfortunately, as far as I know, not yet. In, in America, I'd love to have the Blu-ray or DVD of that. Have been, actually, having been impressed by that one, possibly last year, I thought, well, maybe I could, you know, give this one a chance and maybe it can be equally cool. Well, cut to whatever, a, a grueling frickin' 90 minutes or less later, this is not anything as good as um, She Came From The Woods, in my opinion. It's a movie that very that several times way too often, like one Friday the 13th reference is fine, but like two, three, four, I don't know how many, I think it does like three or four, it seems like a lot more. You know, you start referencing Friday the 13th too much in a, you know, a movie that's, you know, tries to be a Friday the 13th movie, and it just gets a little annoying in my opinion, but very much with like She Came From The Woods, which I think took place in 1987. This one takes place in 1991. I don't, I don't exactly know why they picked that year. Kind of weird. But I think there's something, there's some event I think that happened maybe in the 80s, mid or late 80s before that, some years prior, where some, I think some kid might have died and, and a dad was distraught at the very beginning of the movie. Forgive me if I can't remember all the details, but if a movie's not good enough to, you know, I have I watched this less than a week ago. If it's not good enough to be in, in you know implant certain details in my head where I you know can't forget about them or whatever, then then hell with it in my <laughs> in my opinion. But um, some some kind of death or something happens with I think a camper and at the beginning and you know they try to do this lore with this particular name of this individual as being some kind of whatever and you know and whatever. I can't remember all the details. All I know is. This movie, did I even, uh, I don't think I even mentioned the title. I'm coming at you to review Final Summer. I, I, I did that with Oppenheimer too. I didn't freaking say the title. Coming at you to review Final Summer, a movie that is on or Amazon Prime for sure, or at least when I watched it. And I don't know if it's anywhere else. It doesn't really matter because you're not missing anything if you don't see it. I did happen to look to see it, you know, if it's on Blu-ray. It isn't no, no big deal because I wouldn't want to buy it anyway, but... It starts with this, um, like I say, this accidental death, and I can't remember if it, if the, if the dad is supposed to be a suspect or something later on. It doesn't really matter. Cut to 1991, I think. It's so funny when these movies that are shot, you know, well, you know, almost a quarter of the way into the 21st century are trying to be, you know, take place in the 80s or 90s, and you've got just. You know how there's a, you might not be aware of it if you're young, but if you're older, getting on in years like my age or older, you'll know that there were certain key phrases and things that are, that are, that are said now in popular culture that just weren't said back then. And I hate a movie that's supposed to take place in the 80s or the 90s and people are saying all these, you know, like, really? Or, you know, just, I don't know. It just, just this, you know, seriously? Just so many of these phrases that, you know, I've only heard in the 21st century that I've only been aware of. I mean, the, the words existed back then, but I mean, it's just, you know, when you've got a movie that's shot nowadays and it's supposed to take place 30 or 40 years ago and, like I say, you know, certain cultural things from now will slip in there and it's like, yeah, people didn't do that. Or there's a, I think there's a girl who's got a, you know, just like this butch look and like the, the cow nose ring thing and, and it's just like in 91 I mean the, the 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 amount of girls that looked like that in 1991 were like not very many at all and just to put one of those in this movie that's supposed to take place in 91 it's like give me a break and I could say other things but I won't I mean other things about other cast members but I actually won't um uh, 
so what's what's really dumb about this movie is um, I will say one of the things I actually like the most about it is the opening credit music is actually really cool where they try to do kind of a, I don't know maybe a John Carpenter esque kind of a electronic theme and it, it feels really kind of 80s and fun quite honestly and I was you know when the opening credits were going on with that music I was kind of hopeful that this would be good but unfortunately in my opinion it, it is not um, another thing I don't like about this movie is oh my god whoever like who's ever you know who is like the director I think wrote and produced it so that's fine or whatever but I don't know who the hell's you know you can chalk it up to like two people that could possibly make a decision for camera it could either be director of photography or or the director of the movie so I but but this movie is full in one of my pet peeves is I, I you know I'm a proponent of what's called the static shot which means just a shot like this camera where it's just sitting there on a tripod and it's not moving well if you're if you've been watching movies from the 21st century you'll know that especially like low budget movies but I think it's pretty much all movies like in the 21st century you know movies cinema and you know and or the equivalent movies whatever TV are very much against like static shots and the camera's always got to be moving. It's like the part of the old 21st century ADHD phenomenon, whatever. And I just can't stand when a person just always feels like the camera's got to be moving where it's like side to side, sometimes back and forth, which is just laughable. You know, just, you're just tracking to the side, of, you know, tracking this way, tracking that way. But what's really stupid, and you should, you should in my opinion, like if you're going to do the, the slow push-in where the camera's moving, in and I don't think there's really necessarily put you know pull outs <laughs> push outs you know there's a lot of this just push in where you, you should try to kind of like reserve that for any for a specific moment where you want to like build tension but like almost and I'm not even joking I want to say 75 85 possibly like 90 percent of this movie maybe even or more is just like these slow if there's like a medium or wide shot it's like this just slow push in like every freaking not every but the majority of every camera shot is like got to be moving camera and just like slow push in and <laughs> generally you only did those if something was to indicate something at that moment but I mean this movie doesn't do it to indicate anything it just does it to you know I don't know why I guess they feel like that's some kind of a cool cinematic technique anyway I've been talking for way too long about the push-ins that this movie completely overuses to an extreme amount. Another thing I, I hate in, you know, post drone camera, you know, now that we're in the drone camera era, is uh, just just needless shots from the, sky, from the sky, you know, when they just, when they're just not necessary. And this movie throughout the course of it, well, they're kind of to bridge scenes from one scene to another. We'll just have a, the majority of the movie takes place at night. So we'll just have a day for, for, for night shot of hovering over the trees just to bridge scenes, you know, cut from one scene to the next. We can't do that without putting a shot of the, the you know, from the sky of the trees. And of course, the you know, the, the, the shot's moving. Of course, it's harder to get a static shot <laughs> from a drone unless I guess you, you 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 stabilize it in you know post or whatever but um, it's just like oh we can get shots from the sky now relatively easily so we'll just throw them in there that whole mentality of like it's just like you know movies from the 70s and the 80s and slasher movies and any kind of movies that that didn't have the technology or budget or even even big movies that did have a budget to get a shot from the sky in a helicopter I mean they didn't just do it for no reason you know oh you know th this will just be cool to get a shot from the sky so I'm just basically l l naming off pet peeves you know visually that this movie does it's just like oh my god but um, the whole premise is just like I say that 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 accidental accidental death at the beginning and then the opening credits which were kind of fun with the music and then then we cut to like whatever 91 and we're getting introduced to the camp counselors or something it's like the last day it's like you know hot wet hot American summer it's, I think it's the last day of camp I think all the kids are gone and it's like their last day like the counselors or whatever just whatever and they're gonna whatever close up or whatever and um, 
I can't. Oh, I think that the it, it you know the camp is you know possibly gonna close down and not open or whatever. This this I think it's like the owner slash operator who's got a very like Betsy Palmer. I'm sure that was on purpose, like Betsy Palmer esque vibe to her. It just kind of comes across as like you know you know possible suspect material maybe not she's like the owner or operator and she's like yeah and she gets them all together and this camp might be closed this might be the end of the camp or whatever and it's just this goofy scene and whatever and i think like well of course i think when she's talking there's a push i mean like like i say 90 percent or more of this movie is just camera pushing in for no reason just because they can you know and actually you could probably took them probably a lot longer to film it with laying all that dolly track unless the camera was just on a drone <laughs> i don't know but anyway so it's i was really surprised to see like after they do kind of half-ass introductions of the camp counselors on the last day of camp or whatever if i'm remembering correctly then all of a sudden it's like nighttime it seems, seems like it's 15 minutes in and like i don't know if, uh, this might be under 90 minutes it felt like three hours but it, it might it might be 90 it might be under 90 minutes but it's really strange because usually you have more daytime or more, you know, introducing things and this and that. So it's like 15 minutes in, what felt like 15 minutes in, it's night, and all of a sudden, I, I can't, obviously, I'm not, I can't remember all the details if there, well, there's really no details to remember. But it seems like someone gets, you know, disappears early on, you know, right after, not long after it's nighttime. And you know how, like, on a horror movie like this, like, maybe the last third, the last 30 minutes or 20, 30 minutes are like, oh, someone's gone. I guess I'm always thinking of Friday the 13th. That's like the, you know, the benchmark for what, you know, what all these other ones that came after it kind of go by or whatever. But, you know, usually the looking around or, you know, trying to find lost people in the dark. I mean, it's only like 15, 20 minutes of the end of the movie and stuff. This movie, it's like... Like I say, it gets dark at what felt like 15 minutes, at, you know, into the movie, and it's like someone disappears, and it's like the whole hour, the majority of the movie, hour, hour five, hour ten minutes of it is just at night, which is fine, whatever, but just like, you know, just people looking around, looking for someone, whatever, they disappeared, someone dies, whatever, and oh my god, the whole... You know, after after the opening scene, opening credits, and then the introduction in 91 to all these other characters, and it goes to night, like, it's just one big blur of just whatever, and oh my god, talk about annoying characters, and this, like I say, the, the only thing that's good about this movie is um, that opening credit music, and I will say that the, you know, the killer wears, the, the killer's outfit is kind of cool, the individual that played the killer is kind of, kind of goofy, like, just, there's this one thing where he where he ducks and it's like before he ducks he like bounces up and then ducks it was i had to replay it again and watch it twice it was just maybe i could even show a clip of it i probably have to show a clip of it it's like okay i'm, I'm not just gonna duck but i'm gonna go up and duck you know the the person who played the killer is kind of came across like not a i don't know buff macho kind of guy but someone some geeky idiot who was a fan of these kind of movies who Maybe wasn't butcher macho enough to actually play a killer, but you know had the enthusiasm to play it, and maybe not the most macho butch kind of guy. Like you know, and physically, it's just like that's a complete redo in my opinion. That little boom, <laughs> oh god. I mean. So anyway, but what I will say is that the the appearance of the killer with like that skull, skin tight, you know, fabric skull mask or whatever it's it's not like latex it's like just a piece of fabric that's got a skull painted on it as a matter of fact me and keith in 91 did don't go in the woods too and keith had a very similar uh fabric kind of a thing to put over your head with a like a i guess very similar with a skull printed on it so don't move fuck i mean it fucker Holy shit! Fucking demon! Uh, I didn't do anything! Oh, 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 oh. Maybe you'll see a bit of that, maybe you won't as comparison, but I do like that look and like the camouflage jacket. 
thing and you know the look of the killer was cool and the weapon of choice seemed to be an axe which is fine or whatever but there were at least well two for sure maybe three reference referen references to friday the 13th one of course where characters like Ch -ch -ch. <sighs> and then another i can't remember what the other two were like oh oh the, the other one said like you know, this is what happens in a Friday the 13th movie or something to that effect. And then the third one was someone actually having like a, the you know, the crappy kind of hockey masks that were, you know, are available around Halloween. The ones that look nothing like the hockey masks in the Friday the 13th films. Like, so there's a, at least three references to Friday the 13th series, you know, in this movie. And it's just like, you know, pick one and, and just scrap the other two, in my opinion. You know, um, I probably, if I, if I was going to pick one of those, it'd probably just be nothing verbally spoken, you know. So scratch that ch -ch -ch joke and, you know, oh, this is like Friday the 13th, you know, scratch those two and just have that, you know, half-ass hockey mask appear and just have it not said verbally, but just the visual of like, oh, okay, well, obviously it's 1991, someone brought a half-ass hockey mask to summer camp, makes sense, and we don't have to say it out loud, but whatever. That's my opinion. So I guess in closing, this this whole movie, I guess it felt very much like a full moon movie does back in the day. As much as, you know, there's a part of me that loves the old 90s full moon movies, it also reminded me of how much just, I, I got to do the same thing. It's, it's demonic toys, you know, Tracy Scoggins. Just looking around. We're just going to eat up. Running time, you know, running time just looking around. I probably bitched way too much about this movie, but very little to like about it. The, um, like I say, the just the, the, the camera constantly, but it's not, you know, it's not something that's specific to this movie. Actually, push-ins, you know, on nearly every shot aren't very common, but what's more common is the the drifting side to side, and it has, you know, this movie has that in it as well. It's just like, okay, I think there's a couple static shots shots but yeah i'm not a big fan of drifting camera just to just to move it because you know it's 21st century and people are going to get bored if the camera's not moving kind of thing and let's just push in you know this, this kind of a push in is should be only really utilized if there's like something gonna ha potentially happen or whatever coming up and we're gonna amp up very um subtly you know anxiety in the viewer or whatever but no every single shot is just push in and it's just like oh my god so that kind of that kind of tells your your, your view your movie viewing fandom brain to expect something you know i mean every time it's a creepy scene and it's a push in and there's a character walking to, slowly towards a door or something you you kind of subconsciously expect something and when nothing happens it's just like okay it's just this constant letdown loop <laughs> or whatever anyway can't recommend final summer i like the title of, i like the look of the killer i like the music for the opening credits and the location i will say the location's kind of cool and the nighttime you know videography is is relatively good except for like i say that constantly moving camera that doesn't need to be constantly moving I can go as high as a half of a star out of four stars for final summer. You know, it, it wanted to do something cool, in my opinion. It didn't really do something cool. Yeah, I, I probably have to show you a shot of that. Kill it. Oh, how am I going to find it? Oh, I should have oh, I should have recorded it while I was watching it. Anyway, it's some it's sometime during the dark nighttime scenes, which means it's sometime during all the whole, you know, all a movie or whatever. So I got to find it, but that's fine. You know, I, I'm, I'm willing to go through all that trouble to, to show the five people that are going to watch this review. But I guess that'll do it for my review of this movie. Can't recommend it at all, unlike She Came From The Woods, which I think was a much better kind of a, you know, doing this same kind of summer camp horror movie thing and nod to the 80s and things. Although that movie didn't, you know, do the 80s necessarily perfect either so but anyway feel free to check out my review to see what i thought about that movie and in regards to this movie can't recommend it i guess that pretty much does it thanks so much for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed and as always we'll catch you on the next video oh oh hey man join the party man hey what are you doing
bowl. Oh yeah, it feels a little wet, man. And hey, wh what are you doing? Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Ugh. <laughs> 